to him, sat opposite a Muslim fundamentalist with a bomb. I said, what are you going to do with that? He said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do with this. I'm going to detonate this bomb in the middle of London and destroy the capitalist heartland of this country. Oops, sorry, mate. Bring it to a standstill. Sorry. I said, listen, if you want to bring my country to a standstill, you don't have to detonate a bomb in the middle of London. All you've got to do is pray to Allah for half an inch of fucking snow. <laughs> Throw some leaves on the railway line. That's North Yorkshire fucked. <laughs> I'm absolutely sick to death of Muslim people being demonised as terrorists. Yeah. Well, it's a great big con. It's just a con. How comes it went from the Irish Catholic to the Muslim overnight? It was like a fucking relay race. <laughs> It was like Irish Catholic, Irish Catholic, Irish Catholic, Friday the 13th, peace agreement, Muslim. <laughs> you might as well have had Martin McGuinness and Jerry Adams passing the baton to fucking Saddam Hussein and Osama Bin Laden. <laughs> it's a con. Wake up, open your eyes. Oh, you coppers in the fields, listen to what I'm saying, you thick yeah. bastards. <laughs> Richard Reid, the show bomber, we have more CCTV cameras in this country than anywhere else in Northern Europe. But they didn't pick up Richard Reid walking the way through the airport with his shoes packed with Semtex. You're having a fucking laugh, aren't you? If your shoes were packed with high explosives and you were walking the way through the airport, you'd stand on like a sore thumb. You'd be walking around like that. <laughs> You'd be like an extra from a fucking Bruce Lee film, wouldn't you? <laughs> we have all these terror organisations, the Tamil Tigers. I thought they were a fucking rugby league site. <laughs> Somebody told me the Northern Alliance are kicking off again. I thought, are you I've got my fucking mortgage with them. <laughs> <laughs> it's all ways of making you afraid. <laughs> If Muslim people were such a threat to white Christians, how comes they've been allowed to corner the marches on fucking pizza? I thought that was an Italian thing. A con. And if it's not terrorism, it's other things. It's drought. Drought! This is fucking England! <laughs> We're the wettest country in northern fucking Europe! <laughs> we have more rain than anywhere else! Three days sunshine, they call a fucking drought! <laughs> Oz pipe bans tomorrow! Summer's fallen on a fucking Saturday this week! Drought! It's been going on since 1985! <laughs> If it goes on any longer, Ethiopia will be writing a fucking song for us! <laughs> this is England! It's not like they don't know it's not going to rain again, do they? <laughs> Go to Ladbrokes tomorrow and see what else you can get and it's not raining in Watford for the next fucking six months! <laughs> They'll laugh at you! <laughs> Drought! <laughs> and if it's not terrorism, it's not drought, it's on your TV! It's adverts on the telly. Have you seen that one? For strokes, time to act fast. The four signs of a stroke. Face, sagging. Arm, drooping. Speech, slurring. Time to act fast. No, it's not. It's time to drop drinking, you're fucking pissed. <laughs> How irresponsible is that? They show this woman on this bloke with a burning hole in his head like the start of Bonanza. You could be having a stroke now, I'd be like, that's what the fuck all wrong with you, I can't see any smoke. <laughs> and if it's not terrorism that they keep you in, because it's all about keeping you in a box, making you afraid. Don't be afraid, there's no to be afraid of. Yeah. Yeah. If it's not drought, it's not terrorism, it's not adverts, it's other things. Swine flu. Chicken flu. When are we going to have fucking people flu? <laughs> I went to Glastonbury.
January in 2009 to see Brooke Springsteen and Neil Young. There were 180,000 people there, coughing over each other, splurring over each other. Fucking holes that weren't intended to be fucked. <laughs> and nobody came down with swine flu. Do you remember the Oriental lady on the television? We are now going into pandemic number six. I thought it was a fucking dance. <laughs> I thought it was like Mambo number five. <laughs> and if it's not that, it's other things. They tax every single facet of your life. They tax your clothes, they tax your shoes, they tax your cars, they tax your family, they tax your earnings, they tax your savings, and now they're taxing the weather. And it's your fault according to them. Global warming, I don't know about you, but I'm fucking freezing. <laughs> Six weeks ago, I cancelled the show in this field because they had 10 foot snow drifts. <laughs> Every morning I'm out the windows and out with my aerosol. Fuck the ozone layer. <laughs> Let's have those rays coming down. Fuck it. <laughs> you know, they tax everything. They can detonate nuclear bombs under the sea. They can detonate nuclear bombs under the earth. They can pump billions of tons of shit out into the atmosphere. But it's your fault for leaving your fucking lights on! <laughs> Fuck it, wake up! Wake up! Get your telly off standby, you're gonna kill every fucker! <laughs> oh no, it's a standby. Oh crap. I've got a headache now. <laughs> what I'm trying to say, right? <laughs> Slow down a bit. I hope these drugs don't fucking wear off. <laughs> oh, you're in the field. I've just had four lines of coke on my fucking nostrils. What are you going to know about it? Yeah. I'm sick of political correctness. Political correctness is a fascism. A political correctness is a fascism that stops people speaking out. Political correctness. Political correctness was cynically brought in on the backs of black and Asian people, ushered in so eventually everybody had to watch what they were saying and watch what they're doing to the point now where if you post things on Facebook or Twitter or whatever, you're getting arrested and it's fucking bullshit. I'm sick of living in this politically correct society that says you can't say this and you can't say that and you can't do this and you can't do that. You know, you can't smoke. I ain't smoking. I hate smoking. I've got the lungs of a 75-year-old emphasitic man because of the two irresponsible fuckers that brought me up smoking 60, 70 fags a day. I'm fucked with it. In the summer, I'm not but a great big bag of snot and bile. I remember my dad smoked that much when I was a kid. When we went on holiday for two weeks, we had to put patches on the fucking budgie. <laughs> Come back of holiday, two weeks in Benny Dawn, parents in its cage. Polly wants a fucking fag now! <laughs> bottom, of the, bottom of the parent cage, covered in polo wrappers. <laughs> That's improvisation, by the way. I ain't smoking, but as soon as the government, or the people beyond government, because really all it is is a way of subduing you people and getting you to accept what you should be telling them to fuck off for, do you know what I mean? As soon as the government say, you can't smoke, I'm on 40 fags a day. Because I have that thing inside me that says, I won't be told what to fucking do. <laughs> then they say, then they say, you're going to drink responsibly. Drink fucking responsibly. <laughs> I don't want to drink responsibly. I want to drink for the reason it was put there. To get fucking shit-faced. <laughs> I want to be that drunk. I want to take me pants off, shit myself, and dab it all over some fucker. <laughs> I want to be that drunk. I want to take my coat off and throw myself over the fucking settee. <laughs> I want to be that drunk. I want to go into my 16 year old daughter's bedroom, stick my fingers down my throat, puke my guts up all over her, and say, 
Now you know what I had to go through when you were a fucking baby. <laughs> That's how drunk I want to be. What the fuck? Then you say, the challenge, you can't say packy. You can't say nigger. I don't want to say them. I hate the words. I hate the word nigger more than I hate the word cunt. <laughs> but as soon as you tell me I can't say it, I take my life in my own hands and run round Brixton going nigger, 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 nigger. Because <laughs> I won't be told what to say. <laughs> Do you know something, right? Ten years ago, I was the most down the road, quiet, mild-mannered, middle-of-the-road person. But because the government have stopped everything, they've created the biggest alcoholic chain smoking races in the fucking country. <laughs> Leave us alone! <laughs> Stop swearing. Fuck off. <laughs> what I'm trying to say, right, normally, I've got my pebble. Normally I have some water and I drop the pebble into some water. But I've got no water today. But what am I trying to do with that pebble? When I drop it in the water, I'm trying to create ripples, ripples of laughter. And that is what life is all about. We've come here today and I'm trying to make you laugh by creating ripples of laughter. What's happened in this country today is political correctness has built up barriers between people. It's segregated communities, it's yes. caused fear and mistrust. And it's about time that we weren't afraid to laugh at other people so long as you've got the courage to laugh at yourself. So keep on laughing. Keep on loving. Keep those ripples spreading out from this place today. It's great to play in front of 2,000 spiritual people because I know exactly what you fucking well are. You're all spiritual people with heart and soul. So keep laughing at each other. Laugh at yourself. And let's love a little bit more. Peace and God bless. Thanks very much. Ladies and gentlemen, Chris McLean. Brilliant.